it's always always a good time to talk to you and always uh excited when we get new music from you thanks paul appreciate it man yeah so we, we just saw you actually here in texas for uh the great danzig show which is a whole okay. lot of fun playing that first album right <laughs> It's challenging for me. I mean, it seems like the parts are really simple and people are like, oh, you know, I mean, it's got to be an easy gig. Uh, but because there's just so much highlight on the guitar, it's difficult. It's like, it's always, it's, it's always challenging. It's never easy. And uh, when it's good, it's enjoyable, you know, so uh, it's satisfying when I'm playing the stuff right. But, you know, it's some, some nights I'm better than others. So that's, yeah. that's just me, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've been, we've been listening to you for years, and and it is amazing how much the the sound is just consistently good. Your voice is, is still is still great. That guitar is still loud. Everything's still powerful. I just wonder how you how you keep it up. Like you haven't you haven't lost a step, and I know I'm I lucky a little bit. I mean, I, well, I had these intervals where I was able to uh, take care of myself, and right now I'm not in one of those those places but uh uh that helps so and then i've been doing it a long time I mean, it's just it's a matter of practice and consistently doing it that's really where it's at so simple as that yeah well uh i i, I know i told you this in in person once before but um that, there's there's a funny thing and in, in my history i went to uh, I used to live in Philadelphia, and I never won anything on the radio. But I won a uh, a contest to eat cheesesteaks with you guys. Oh wow! <laughs> Years God, ago, that's so long ago. So long wasn't ago. that with Erin? Was... Remember Erin, the nurse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it she involved in that? Okay, yeah. Nurse, so, yeah, Erin, was... whatever. Yeah. So yeah, back when there was radio promotion for Prong, right. and we were doing <laughs> other things, like we went on a major label. Yeah. Yeah. I was too young to get into the Chestnut Cabaret, but but uh, somehow we made it in in a fantastic show, and it's always a good show. Yeah. Cool, yeah. And so, um, and so, of course, you know, as someone who has been listening a long time, um, you know, it, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I know it, it is what you do, but what keeps it exciting for you, and and keeps it consistently like moving up because it is moving up. It's just a calling in a way, and then the, the legacy of the band keeps me going. Uh, I I sort of leave it up to the universe. I hate sounding that way, but we didn't really know with my family. We didn't know if I was going to be able to continue doing it, and uh, I just sort of got pulled into it again. Where we got offered a good tour, uh, et cetera. So it was, I was like, okay, we can continue doing it. It's it's it, then when when I'm called to do it and a record has to be made, then I get more energized. I feel it's another challenge. So uh, it's always challenging. I mean, I'm never going to say, oh, it's e easy. So I like to be challenged here and there. And uh, this was a good challenge, the new record, figuring out how to, exactly how to do it. Because it always changes. The situation is always different. And uh, the planning for this was good. Uh, I haven't experienced that that much in the past here and there. And that has a lot to do with the success of the record. Maybe not monetarily. I mean, I don't expect that much from sales or anything like that these days. But, um, you know, as far as how it came out, which I'm pleased with the new record. I mean, I think it came out well. I think that, you know, the planning was good. Uh, so that was the challenge is trying to figure out as a self manager, like how am I going to do this? And uh, you know, it was done. So it was an accomplishment. Yeah, and and then of course, uh, you know, I know touring has been uh, challenging for a lot of independent bands uh, lately. But uh, hopefully, we're going to get to see a tour. We get to get some uh, some gigs this winter. Uh no, uh, we we were doing one show in Clifton, New Jersey at at Dingbats, and that's October twentieth. So get your tickets are going pretty fast. So you could do get that's the only chance you're going to be able to see prong this year in America. Uh, we have an in-store appearance on Long Island, but other than that, uh, no, we got nothing planned. We will to you, we go to Europe in November. So that's a, a, uh, 
a month tour with Life of Agony. So in Europe, again, uh, this would be the third time this year we've been in Europe. So that's really where, uh, you know, the response for Prong is better and we could, you know, make a living over there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, you go, go, where, go where the people want to have you in, in, in mass. And so that that's great. Uh, but we may have to get yeah. to get to New Jersey to see this. That sounds great. Yeah, no, it's going to be cool. Yeah, I mean, it's not that far from Philly or whatever. So, you know, it's just yeah, absolutely. Well, and um, and of course, you're up on stage all the time, and people look up to you, and they go, "That's what I want to do." You make it look so easy, and always have. Yeah, uh, what kind of advice do you give to those musicians who are, who are just in the crowd and you see the younger kids that are picking up on it, and going, "Yeah, I want to do that." I don't think they need my advice. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm from the old school. Like my advice would be inapplicable to what's going on today. Uh, I come from an era where you have to get in a van and bust it out, and it was wasn't social media and it wasn't the internet. And I I have I since that's come into place, uh, I'm more confused about this whole thing than anybody. Like or as much confused. <laughs> I, I don't know how to promote myself on this level. Back in the old day when it was DYI, punk hardcore alternative scene, the real old scene, that's where uh, I prospered more. Where you know we, we made our own flyers, we got out there and plastered them around the city, and you know pressed up our own records and uh, played local gigs and worked at rock clubs and just was part of the scene. I mean, that, that, I don't know if that applies anymore. Anyway, but that's what you had to do years ago. Mm -hmm. Now you just got to write great songs and figure out somebody else who knows more about digital marketing, right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't even know if writing good songs has anything to do with it either. I mean, I, I sound very cynical and uh, for a reason. I, I don't know if songs makes a difference to anybody neither because, yeah, I, I do come from a, an, an era of writing good songs where that was, in, that was important. And uh, that, I mean, I'm glad you said that because that is the focal point of Prong is trying to get those songs, like the good songs and, you know, like busting balls to get them. And, you know, I don't know if anybody gives a crap. It's like, it's like, you know, they, they it's, it's breakdown riffs and mosh parts and this other stuff that, you know, kids are into. Uh, and the, the, I mean, most of the lyrics, I mean, lyrics I spent a lot of time on. I mean, lyrics are a, a, another thing that no one really sees. I mean, there's some good, I've, I've been on, on, on top of some bands and I get like the lyrical content and it's cool, but they're unintelligible. And uh, that's like, you know, something that I, I fail to ever understand where it, it's just this barking and screaming and growling and it's like you know why even write any lyrics just like make a bunch of noises you know so yeah. uh, I'm, I'm very old school with that i like you know it's like i like to hear that chorus and i like to understand some of the words and and they got to mean something they got to be you know prevalent to what's going on you know and you know like they a lot of the bands today it's like there's that much it's it, it apart from or apart from poor me, poor me, poor me. What, what are they telling me? Nothing. It's just like, it's like, you know, like life is terrible and you know, like we're, we're abused and that's pretty much everything's unfair. So that, that's about as much as I get out of a lot of the songs that I, that's true. Well, and that's what we've always appreciated about your music. You can, you can hear you clearly and, and the, and the words are, you mean something. So I love it. Well, yeah, I might try for that. I mean, whether I'm successful, I mean, people like, they mis miscalculate the song. They, the, they go, aren't you saying this? And I'm like, no, dude, that's not the lyric. So I, I try to be articulate. <laughs> it doesn't always come out that, you know, the, the Brooklyn accent somehow affects the whole thing. So, <laughs> well, um, a, uh, a, 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 my co host is a New Jersey native, Dallas Cowboy legend, Drew Pearson, famously caught the hail. What? Mary. Yeah. Are you Isn't kidding me? Oh, no. my God. That's amazing. And so, uh, of course, you know, he, uh, you know, we like to ask people the Hail Mary moment. And so I got to ask you, your Hail Mary moment, the moment in your life or career where you just had to go for it and it worked out for you. We're going to put it on the show. Well, it's, I think it was going to a gig. I mean, when I saw Killing Joke the first time, it was like 1982 at uh, the Underworld in New York City. That was like the life 
life-changing moment for me musically. So, like, after that, I was like, I get it. I'm doing this. And I've always been just this huge Killing Joke fan, and Prong has always been a band that tries to emulate them. So uh, yeah. that was, like, the big musical. Like, if I go back and look at the one big part of my career was seeing them. So that was a big thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was we kind of touched on it earlier, but we talk about on the show that success mindset, kind of keeping in mind, even when things are tough, like that I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do this. I don't know if it's a, a East Coast stubbornness or what, but is there is there something that you keep in mind that kind of keeps you uh, going even when things are tough? Uh, yeah, I guess I, I said earlier is like the calling of it. And uh, uh, I, I don't do it to have like a good time anymore like that. And uh, I think that's important. It's uh, I stay in the, in between. So I try to look at the signs yeah. and uh, you know, uh, and the legacy of prong is important to me. You know, I have a, a, a young son and uh, I'd like the more records I do and the more I keep doing this, even as stubborn as it is, there's more for him to reflect upon later in life when I'm gone. So it's like, you know, like I left him this legacy and, you know, his name is Tommy Victor too. So uh, I, I'm leaving this to him. Yeah. I uh, love that. And, um, and then of course, you know, with each album, you know, they, they you know, the, the crowd has favorites, but, but um, I, I which sure the songs, uh, is there one or two? Uh, maybe it's like choosing a favorite kid, but are there a couple songs on there that, that you just can't wait for the rest of the world to hear? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I let that, that's, I, I don't, I, I, it's weird with me with records. It's like they have to really push me to uh, promote them and to get it out there. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty passive in a lot of ways with that. Like, it's like, if it catches on, if people get, I don't know what songs are going to be popular. Uh, I have, or I don't know what people are going to do. Like, especially on this record where I sat down by myself and just wrote 10 songs and I, I wasn't in the mode or I, I, I don't do the 20 song demos anymore. I just, which, uh, it never worked out for me. We were, like I remember on Rude Awakening, I wrote like so many songs for that record, and you know between the label and A and R and the band and everybody, like we just started and the producer, we started cutting songs and dumping dumping them. And it's like by the time that we did the record, I realized that uh, hey, you know a lot of the songs I don't even know which songs we dropped, but they were probably better than the ones that came out because like I was starting to go like some of these songs that, that everybody else is picking aren't really the strong song. So like, I just write the songs now that, and we write it for the record and let the chips fall as they may. That's it. That's the best thing you can do. Well, we're glad yeah. that you continue to do it because gosh, every, every record that comes out is like, man, still sounds amazing. And, and this thank you, great. man. Thank you, Paul. Everyone to check it out and uh, look and really appreciate the, uh, the great answers and, uh, and your time and look forward to seeing you in person again soon. Yeah, man, come to Jersey, Clifton, New Jersey, Dingbats, October 20th. Yes, sounds good. All right, well, thank, thank you man. so much. All right, man. All right, buddy. Later, man. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.